name is James Lewis, and I'm here today with the author of Data Oriented, or Data, Data Oriented Programming, uh, Jeroen Aten. I cannot convince people to adopt Clojure, mm. but I like it so much that there must be something in Clojure, like a, a universal paradigm that I could share with the, with the community of developers. Mm. So I spent a couple of weeks and months with, with Mining Falls and with, with Clojure developers to to figure out, is there a way to formulate uh, closure principles in a non-closure uh, way? Mm. And that's that's what data-oriented programming is about. Mm. So it, it's, a, it's a way to get all the closure goodies mm. without having to learn closure syntax. The goal of data-oriented programming is to reduce complexity of information systems. So when we talk about complexity, we often talk about the difference between accidental versus essential complexity. Right. We have a, a, a sort of old joke in ThoughtWorks, which is uh, you know, 50, no, maybe even 90% of our job is taking data from A and moving it to B. Right. Um, uh, and the other 10% is showing it at C, right? I mean, that's, that's exactly. pretty much what most enterprise software yes, developers do. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. In the book, I use JavaScript as an example. Right, yeah. And when it really matters, I, I illustrate how, also how to do it in Java. Mm. Uh, but you know, JavaScript is easy to read by anybody, so I use it more as uh, the, all the code examples in the book work, but it's more like you can read it as pseudocode mm. in order to get a real sense of that it's not only abstract principles, in, it's uh, pragmatic, it's mm. things that you can do tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Right. So there are basically four principles mm -hmm. that we could summarize as a one meta principle mm. that uh, can be expressed in four words. Right. Treat data as data. So that's that oriented programming. And as you probably know, state is the number one enemy. So we want to, we cannot avoid state, but we want to tame it by putting it, by localize it. So mm. only some slight pieces of our code will, will deal with the state. Mm. But all the other pieces are stateless. And one could argue that you know, tiny types would be a, a sort of the, almost the opposite approach, right? So rather right. than just treat data as generic, it's a number or it's a, I guess, a string or whatever it is, right? Types are not maps, mm. they are glasses through which you look at reality. Mm. But the reality is untyped. You, and sometimes you could look at the same reality with pink glasses or with blue glasses. Mm. When we say immutability, we, we mean, we don't mean things that never change. We mean managing changes in an immutable way. So, so what I'm hearing is um, we should buy the book because it will teach us how to write code <laughs> that's going to uh, better able us to add new features and modify existing codes more easily. Uh, we'll hopefully have fewer bugs. These are big promises. Um, I'm certainly going to take a look at, uh, at your book. It sounds super, super interesting. Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.